the global network of neo-Nazis that inspired a British teenager to terror. I turned away from being tolerant at a young 14. My phone was found with pictures of Hitler on it. My name's Daniel Desimone, and I'm investigating network leaders as they recruit in the UK. The UK is a place that that uh, we think there's a lot of potential. But right now, you know, we want to build our numbers up there. They not only want to form terrorist cell structures, they also want to inspire others to go out and commit lone actor acts of terror. I speak to a family torn apart by their violence. Our family will never be the same again. I mean, this, this destroyed our family. And police who say right-wing extremism is the fastest growing terror threat. I'm really concerned with the young and mid-teens, the propensity towards violence and the fascination with violence. As the extreme right stands accused of helping to stoke racial tension in the States, I'm on the hunt for leaders of the network who hide in the shadows online. The main question is, does he understand how much damage he's caused? Let's go. Let's do it. I am a radical national socialist. I'm starting to write a journal I hope to record events from now all the way to the inevitable race war. Last year, a Durham teenager became the youngest person ever convicted of planning a terror attack in the UK. He was 16 and kept a diary of his descent into neo-Nazi extremism. The white race is being silently genocided. What I may write here could be very infringing and incriminating should it fall into the hands of someone who doesn't follow my ideology. He was radicalised online. He wanted to help start a race war and thought violence was the only way to make it happen. I just want to strike the system, but wanting means nothing. I boil down the areas that are worth attacking here. Banks, railways, public transport, bridges, but how? He wanted to build a bomb, but couldn't get hold of the ingredients he needed here. So he turned to an online contact in the States, someone calling himself Italo. I put some manuals on explosives up. I found a lot of such manuals recently, although the illegality of ammonium nitrate is regrettable. That being said, my associate is going to mail me some. They made plans on an encrypted app. Hey, man. Yeah? So I made a cash app thing. Italo333. All right. I'll get on it. I just need to know, one, where you want it delivered, plus how much money you're going to send. All right. Well, exact, it's £30.64. pence, $40. I'll send the address after I get payment sorted. Payment failed, and so did the teenager's bomb-making ambitions. Police, who'd been tracking him online, arrested him. He's now serving six and a half years in prison. His prosecution is one of many I've covered in the last four years. As if I was talking to you in 2014, 6% of my casework would be extreme right wing. It's now 10% since 2017. We've disrupted 25 plots designed to maim and kill. And eight of them were extreme right wing. I still think it's what I would describe as a toehold in the United Kingdom for right wing threat. What I don't want it to become is a foothold. I wanted to know more about this dangerous world where the Durham teenager and Italo were able to share information and form alliances, part of a new wave of extremist groups online devoted to terror. The young generation are like absolutely depressed, politics is a mess, so you know it almost was the perfect storm to come in and say to young lads, look, accelerate, let's destroy, we're angry, let's show everybody we're angry. Jake and I are part of an international collaboration of journalists trying to expose these extremist groups. 
media organizations need to cooperate on this. People could die, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's bigger than your job, you know, stop it with a scoop. Like, they've got their networks, but like, now we've got ours as well. Yeah, yeah. Their chat groups have basically got people from all over the world. There's no borders. It takes, like, frankly, nerds like us to be in it, to be like, we'll talk to like four in the morning, like, looking at the most tiniest detail. These groups want to destroy society so they can take power. Ethnic minorities, women and gay people are all targets in their ideology of chaos and destruction. They love any like social distress, anything that's like messed up in society, they love it. They want to collapse. Society. They want to collapse, yeah, they're a collapse cult. But it's not your granddad's Nazism, it's not like, you know, jack boots, it's not like uh, running around like skinheads, it's very different. I would consider myself a natural sadist. Seeing weak people suffer and feel genuine fear fills me with a type of glee. I turned away from being tolerant at a young 14. I tore down LGBT posters, got suspended for it. My phone was found with pictures of Hitler on it. My hunt for the leaders in this neo-Nazi network begins with the person who helped turn a Durham teenager into a would-be bomber, Italo. They met on a website called Fascist Forge, where more than a thousand people were registered and nothing was off limits. It's like, meet a Fascist Forge, like find your mutuals, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then move on to encrypted apps when yeah, they yeah. want to talk about like, who they want to kill. Italo was prolific online. He celebrated infamous murders posted streams of violent imagery and terror plot instructions. He hadn't been named in court, so all I had to go on was his alias. I mean... He's quite mysterious, him. Yeah. He seems to be quite well organised. He's good at staying under the radar. We don't know who he is. And certainly people I've spoken to kind of talk about him like he's a serious guy. It was interesting, he said about Italo, which is he's a serious person. Uh, serious meaning dangerous. You just don't know where you're going to get to them. You don't know whether you're going to find out who they are. That can be quite frustrating until you get to them and you're able to challenge them. You sort of worry because you worry about what they're going to do, uh, what they're going to encourage. Uh, and I think that, so that anxiety is still there at the moment. For several weeks, I thought I was looking for a man, but it turns out I was wrong. Repeating together clues Italo had left online, I discover he's even younger than the boy he helped to radicalise. He was only 15 when the two met. We're not naming him because of his age. He lives in Connecticut, and we understand he's been visited by the FBI. I'm really concerned with the young and mid-teens uh, and the propensity towards violence and the fascination with violence. You know, browsing for it, looking for it, and what we have found, and this is particularly gross in my view, is very young people who've never met the person on the other end of their chat room, who grow instantly attracted to that person, develop deep relationships very quickly online. And those relationships can be both long lasting, but also um, used to incite and instruct. The University of Pennsylvania student went missing a week ago. The Sheriff's Department now calling this a homicide investigation. It is such a devastating thing to spend 20 years raising a child to do something good with their lives, to be a good, not just a good human being, but somebody that is trying to repair the world and make it a better place. That is the type of man that Blaze would be today. Blaise Bernstein went missing in January 2018. His body was found in a shallow grave in a park near his family home in Orange County, California. The 19-year-old, who was Jewish and gay, had been stabbed more than 20 times. We don't live in the same home that we raised our children in anymore because it was too painful for us to stay there. Our family will never be the same again. I mean, this this destroyed our family. I will never, I will never get over it. I will never get over the loss of this child, never. 
22-year-old Sam Woodward, who'd known Blaze since high school, has been charged with his murder and is due to stand trial soon. My mother-in-law, she was born in 1936 in Romania. Many of her relatives were taken to concentration camps in the area. She lived through a war and she saw the devastation to her, to her country, to her community. And her grandson was killed by a Nazi. Woodward has pleaded not guilty. He's alleged to have belonged to a neo-Nazi group that's been linked to five murders in the States called Atomwaffen Division. It's connected to a UK-based group, the Sonnenkrieg Division, that was banned earlier this year. I was completely ignorant that these things were really a thing. It was right under our noses and we had no, no idea. And with the way that we have social media now and the way that we connect with each other through iPhones, it's so seamless now and so easy to connect with things that are really fringe, very extreme. Until a few years ago, extreme right-wing groups like National Action were very visible on Britain's streets. Now the neo-Nazi movement is online and underground, hiding behind aliases to form networks and add to their ranks. I wanted to delve deeper into this dark world. I created fake identities so I could search online platforms and join groups in encrypted messaging apps undetected. One platform that is very, very relevant to this area is Telegram, the encrypted messaging application. You've got one here, which every day just produces endless propaganda and glorification of violence. What's quite shocking really is that um, this is completely open. There's no hiding these accounts. The more I follow these accounts, the more disturbing content is recommended to me. Search algorithms creating echo chambers. It's easy to see how you can get drawn in. Got, got a fake account on Instagram, and then I've been able to follow a load of extremist accounts. I'm not looking for these. They are just simply being suggested to me based on the things I've already followed. And really what happens then is if someone is genuinely making their way in this world and perhaps becoming more radicalised, they don't even have to look for people. They are being suggested to them and proposed to them as people they want to follow. Instagram says safety is a top priority and accounts, pages and groups that repeatedly violate their policies are removed from recommendations and demoted in search results. Telegram didn't respond. In this online world, many roads lead to the website Fascist Forge, where extremist Italo met and befriended the Durham teenager. Police interest prompted the man behind the site to take it down early this year. He calls himself Matthias. He says he's 25 and lives in Los Angeles. I want to know who he really is. I call another journalist contact called Ali Winston, who knows the LA scene well. At first I was looking at it because it kind of overlapped with some of the more traditional elements in California's gang culture. A couple of years back it was more, it was a different group of people, more people who were suburban, middle class, um, very young high schoolers, and educated too. Sadly, we've seen a big uptick in domestic, um, what, you know, what we would call domestic terrorism from these organizations. Um, there have been quite a number of murders, assaults, shootings. 7-1, uh, suspects talking about uh, all these Jews need to die. That's the suspect keeps telling about uh, killing Jews. Uh, he doesn't want any of them to live. Eleven people were killed in this attack on a synagogue in Pittsburgh in 2018. And it's not just the states. Eyewitnesses say the MP was shot and stabbed. She died of her injuries. Joe Cox murdered on the streets of a Yorkshire town by a white supremacist. It is clear that this can now only be described as a terrorist attack. And in New Zealand, 51 people murdered last year at two mosques in Christchurch.
Footage of the murders was promoted on the Fascist Forge website. Its founder, Matthias, like the killer himself, hell-bent on accelerating the destruction of society. I could see that Matthias had been promoting something else on Fascist Forge too, a militant group called The Base. The FBI says its aim is to incite a race war and unite white supremacists around the globe. If Matthias is involved, it's a big lead in my hunt to unmask him. The base is interesting. They've kind of positioned themselves as an umbrella organization over other um, groups in that far right sphere. Police say the three men arrested in Georgia had trained at a camp for the white supremacist group known as the base. In January, three members of the group were charged with plotting to kill two anti-fascists. It's not interested in electoral politics, um, rallies. Their goal is to prepare for proper conflict. Earlier this year, I tracked down the founder and leader of the base in Russia. Lone wolf attacks or lone wolf operations are not. The 47-year-old had been using an alias and claimed to have worked for the US security services. I discovered his real name, Ronaldo Nazaro. He directed the base from his upmarket flat in St. Petersburg. We all believe that there's no saving the system now. So the best option for us is to see it fall, see it collapse. Um, I mean, even if it's just like on a localized level, whatever degree will offer some sort of power vacuum that we can take advantage of. Nazaro didn't know it, but his secretive organization had been infiltrated. Earlier this year, covert recordings of how it recruits were leaked to US civil rights organization, the Southern Poverty Law Center. Every single person was asked about if they had training in weapons or uh, firearms. Nazaro wanted it to be a real life training ground for people to learn guerrilla warfare tactics in preparation for a race war. It's pretty rare that we would get a set of recordings where dozens and dozens of people are being asked in some really you know, deep detail sometimes to describe how they eventually became a white nationalist or a neo-Nazi. The recordings, which haven't been broadcast before, reveal Ronaldo Nazaro trying to influence and groom would-be recruits. He encourages them to read an obscure book from the 1990s. We're not going to name it. And, um, did you read I think you got a lot out of it, so I definitely urge you to, to read that. Because a lot of us, that is sort of a guiding philosophy, you know, the general idea of system collapse. The book promotes total war against society and encourages racial hatred. This was really required reading for members of the organization, and it's probably the most important text in the neo-Nazi world right now. They consider themselves the revolutionaries of the white power movement. And people in that part of the movement not only want to form groups in terrorist cell structures like the base, but they also want to use their propaganda to inspire others to go out and commit lone actor acts of terror. Then I hear the base pushing recruitment in Europe and the UK. We have a goal of initially creating two to three man cells in, you know, in as many areas as possible and then kind of growing from there. The UK is a place that, that uh, we think there's a lot of potential. Um, but, but right now, you know, we want to build our numbers up there. All the calls follow the same pattern. Applicants are vetted from a script. Um, why do you want to join the base? The caller's British and says he's a teenager. Same with this would be member. Can you hear me? They all use aliases to hide their identities. 
This will be about 30 minutes. So let's start with the general question and please tell us a little bit about yourself. And uh, what, what is your ethnicity? Many trying to join the base are teenagers. Time and again, the leadership discuss shaping their ideology. In other words, radicalizing them. Uh, what we do now is we just kind of go around and, uh, and and everyone kind of gives a thumbs up, thumbs down. And I think might lead, lead a little work ideologically, but he sounds like he's kind of on his way. You know, he's definitely in the right direction, it sounds like. This is quite amazing, actually. The leader basically asks them, so guys, what do you think? Does he match, does he kind of meet our standards? Is he a neo-Nazi enough? But it's very, very cynical. And when you strip it all away, what these people are really doing is seeking uh, recruits to collapse society. Basically, everyone who got to this vetting stage was allowed to become a member of the group. As long as they had the right ideological commitments and they had a convincing radicalization narrative, we tend to talk about groups like this as if they sort of emerged from the ether, but really what they're drawing on is a long-standing white power canon. So these are groups who are pushing slogans like bullets, not ballots, um, which is exactly the ideology that the base has adopted now. But what about the man who'd been promoting the base on his website? The man who calls himself Matthias. Matthias, what do you think? Um, I, I think it's fine. Um, I, I don't have any objections. Finally, I'd heard his voice. He seemed confident that he'd be able to, uh, you know, balance the, uh, his obligations and that he would have no problem fulfilling them. So, yeah, he's got my thumbs up. It's quite a big moment in our hunt for him. We thought he was in this group because uh, he was so heavily promoting it uh, online. But um, this actually shows it. This is him on the call. He's being asked at the end of this interview, what do you think of this guy? What do you think of this potential recruit? He sounds arrogant. He sort of sounds sort of laconic as if he's the man. You get a kind of a sense of who is important in the base. And Matthias pops up in not a few of these calls, so he appears to be pretty senior too. It feels like I'm getting closer to Matthias, but I still didn't know his real name. I ask Ali to see if he can help in my hunt to unmask him. There's nothing about him online. He's been really careful to cover his tracks. We've got that avatar of him from Fascist Forge where you kind of see the half skull mask over his face. And, uh, but you can make out his hair, his long hair and his eyes. And then digging around, there's one image of them in California, of the base cell in California posing with a flag. And you can see one of them has what appears to be that long flowing hair. And, you know, I put the two side and side together. I blew them up. I looked at them and I said, that looks the same. Like, it looks like the same guy. So then I worked through a different set of contacts and um, I've come up with a name for him. The name, Matthew Bakari, the founder of Fascist Forge and a senior figure in the base, a group seeking to expand its neo-Nazi network into Europe and the UK. Time to ask him some questions. I traced him to a property in California. I can't travel to the States because of coronavirus. So I asked another journalist to pay him a visit. We're actually on our drive over right now. The main question is uh, about his activities as Matthias on uh, Fascist Forge and in the base. Uh, does he understand how much damage he's caused? Our team in California wait for most of the day for the unemployed 25-year-old, but he's nowhere to be seen. So they knock on his door. Okay. Let's go, let's do it. Hi, can we speak with Matthew Bakari? Is he available? 
They asked three times for him to come to the door. First, they were told he'd been up all night and was still asleep. Then, that he didn't want to speak to anyone. You could hear them talking. We could hear them talking. I don't know if Tim could... Yeah, I could hear them talking upstairs, yeah. it sounded like. Yeah, so definitely he wasn't asleep. We knew he wasn't asleep. It, it, he just didn't want to come to the door. Matthew Bakari, a.k.a. Matthias, the online Big I Am, who wouldn't come out of his bedroom to answer questions about his involvement in a global network of neo-Nazis. He hasn't responded to the letter we left for him either. Well, they're opening up right now. Yeah. He's definitely looking. But don't be fooled into thinking these people aren't dangerous. As my investigation draws to an end, protests, some of them violent, erupt in the US following the death of George Floyd at the hands of police. Online, the neo-Nazi network I've been following are watching what's going on closely. They've certainly been paying a ton of attention to the disturbances. Um, because of their, their particular uh, brand of bigotry, they view them Negatively, um, there has been talk about, in some channels I've seen some talk about attacking certain protests, about using an attack on these to push forward societal collapse. In Las Vegas, three men with alleged links to the far right are facing terror charges for conspiring to cause destruction during protests there. And what we've seen over the past couple of years is really that this more violent faction of the white power movement is gaining more adherence. And there's been sort of a change in the tenor of the movement where violence is becoming more and more readily accepted um, among members of the movement. And you know, where, where there's violence, you're going to find more violence. I feel like I've become more violent recently. Been wanting to lash out for about a week now go down to the forest, find the most public path there is, tie a string at throat height between two trees. I'll bring a bat, wear a mask, wear cheap clothes in case I need to get rid of them. As the neo-Nazi network tries to spread its influence across the UK, Europe and the States, the extremists who recruit and radicalise online are a real and present danger. Is this the history that we want to keep repeating itself? And do people that hate understand that this is where it leads? That they will be standing in the ashes of the people that they kill? We can change things. We have to. We don't have a choice. Humanity must get rid of hate.